Well, good day, everybody. My name is uh, Arjun Koch. I'm a gastroenterologist and interventional endoscopist from the Erasmus MC Medical Center in Rotterdam, the Netherlands. And I would like to present you this lecture on ESD using the Erby hybrid knives. Um, first of all, when you are embarking on ESD, I think it's very important to choose your own knife. Um, why is that important? Every knife has different properties and you will experience um, even an expert uh, in ESD can be a beginner when he uses a completely different knife than he is used to. So I would strongly suggest everybody to use their own knife. I chose uh, for me, a personal, the Erby hybrid knives and I'll tell you later why. Um, next to that you will need a transparent cap on the tip of the endoscope and we use submucosal fluid lifting uh, based on saline and indigo carmine. No viscous fluids because they will not pass through the small channel for uh, injection. Here you have a close-up of two of the knives and you can see uh, that the tip has a um, metal part, the needle for cutting, but there is also a small channel um, which allows passage of water for submucosal injection. And because it's very small, only normal saline uh, with indigo carmine. I will tell you a little bit about the cutting plane that we try to get into for submucosal dissection. I think this cutting plane in the upper third of the submucosa is wrong. You will meet a lot of small vessels that you actually sometimes cannot even see and you have to treat a lot of small bleedings. My preference is to go deeper and to treat the root of the vessel so you will immediately get rid of all bleedings. Other important aspects in that is we strive of course for an unblock resection, an R0 resection, so for that you would like to have as much submucosa uh, on the lesion side um, for, to achieve that goal. Another important point is as long as you can see the muscle layer uh, when you're that close, you can prevent cutting it. Now, we can do ESD throughout the whole GI tract and basically there's a different approach uh, for every uh, part of that uh, GI tract and possibly also an option for a different knife. There's always an option, go, do you go full circumferential incision or do you make a stepwise approach? Well, in the esophagus um, is a narrow tubular structure. I would usually recommend, recommend a full circumferential approach, um, often combined with a tunneled approach. In the stomach, a full circumferential approach, I think, is the best approach because lesions compared to normal mucosa are hard to delineate and therefore it is easier to make a full circumferential incision then at first and then start your submucosal dissection. In the colon, because of the difficulty uh, of a good submucosal lift and a very thin submucosal layer, it is often useful to do a stepwise approach um, to be able to build up a submucosal fluid cushion with part of the, of the mucosa still intact. Now it's important to think about which type of endoscope you're going to use. And that is a trade-off between flexibility and size of the working channel. My preference, if it's in reach of a standard gastroscope, is, would be to use a standard gastroscope with a 2.8 or 3.2 millimeter channel. The instrument can pass through without any problems. There is a drawback to that. A normal gastroscope has a 90 degree downwards angulation. So for instance, for ESD in the rectum, sometimes it's hard uh, to have the ang downward angulation that you would like, you can rotate the endoscope 180 degrees or switch to a colonoscope which can rotate 180 degrees. A transparent cap is necessary when you use Erby hybrid knives. It makes um, close-up steering possible with still a good view of the target and you can use that for protection also to cut just in front of the distal cap. The use of gravity is always a good idea. Um, look where gravity is, look for fluid pools, you can rotate patients. It doesn't have to be in the position that you started. 
think about that during these procedures. Now I'll show you some examples of ESD in different parts of the GI tract. I'll start with ESD in the, in the esophagus. Now the difficulty here is that lesions are often difficult to delineate. For squamous cell carcinoma, you really need Lugol staining um, to be able to really demarcate the lesion and place clear markers. You'll be facing difficulties with the tubular structure uh, in the narrow esophagus. So you will have to make circular cuttings. Whenever you cut laterally, you will always be approaching the muscle layer. So make a circumferential cut. Do this stepwise with partial lifting and you'll be fine. And you'll notice in the esophagus you'll have a difficult time with heartbeats and breathing of the patient. I'll show you in the video later. Probably it's best to do a full circumferential cut first and start from the distal side because because of the lifting uh, the narrow, narrowing of the lumen will be even uh, greater and you will have a hard time visualizing the lesion. So start from the distal side and then from the oral side and you can even combine that with a tunneled approach. Like in this uh, picture here you can see that we created three tunnels to have a circumferential cut and then uh, cut the bridges in between. This video I'm now working on the oral side. You see the difficulty with breathing and heart rate, but we do a stepwise lifting first to get access. When there is a peristaltic move like this, just wait and first make sure that your knife is in the right submucosal plane before you do anything else. Now once we're sure we're in the right plane, we do a stepwise lift and we make a short cut. So we don't need lifting the entire lesion we do this stepwise. There is no need to ch exchange the instrument, which is absolutely a clear benefit of using this type of knife. Here again, some cutting and then again lifting before you continue. Wait for the peristaltic move and breathing of the patient and continue. This will all get better as soon as you do your submucosal dissection. The scope will be in a more stabilized position. You'll notice quite some bleeding. This patient was on double platelet uh, aggregation blockers uh, because of a heart condition and we were instructed by the cardiologist not to discontinue this. So we accepted this at the expense of a little bit more bleeding. So slowly here we're creating access to the submucosal space, treating some bleeding before we continue, and then we try to get access to the submucosal space. Once we have access, we can crawl in using the cap to crawl under the lesion, and you'll find yourself in a much more stable position to do a safe uh, and easy cutting. Notice how easy this lifts. You can at all times see the muscle layer and slowly we're digging ourselves in. It's still a little bit too early to go into the tunnel, but once we've cut these fibers as well, we can probably enter. I'm probably going to do now. Yes. And you see this clearly stabilizes the view instantly. Again, small injections and cut only what you have lifted and what you can really see. There's a large vessel on the right side. Leave it for now. Try to get a little bit more clearance first, submucosal dissection, before you attack this vessel. We can continue cutting and you can see clearly we're now in the lower part of the submucosal plane. So we'll try to find the root of the vessel and treat it there. Slowly we're continuing this cut. 
Notice with the working channel on 7 o'clock position, I'd like to cut from the left to the right side. So basically you are cutting what is in your view instead of cutting to the left side uh, where you're cutting what you cannot see. Here again, slowly we see the next large vessel. Don't try to treat it now. Try to dissect around it so you have the best possible situation to handle the vessel. We're still in the same tunnel. I'm trying to clear the vessel a little bit more. Here you can see we just continue cutting fibers and actually we're already approaching the distal side of the circumferential cut. In this case I decide, decide to go on cutting and continue until I have reached the distal side. Um, that has another advantage when we try to treat this vessel and it might start bleeding. Bleeding is very hard to control when you're inside a small tunnel. Uh, people who perform POEM can tell you all about that. Um, but once you have opened the backside, which is something during POEM you would never do, at least the blood can pour out uh, in that direction and you'll have a more safe situation. I think you would agree by now that the vessel is clearly completely skeletized and if we approach it now either with a knife or with a coa grasper or another instrument uh, we can treat this vessel safely. Never use clips in this situation because you need to continue your dissection and a clip would only hamper that and might conduct electricity which is something that you would not like. even open from the other side before I even attempt treating the vessel. You can see that happening here. So I've reached the distal side from both sides of the vessel and now it's time to treat the vessel. We'll go on to the next video. I skipped the part of treating the vessel, but now we try to finish the lateral cuts. So first of all, make a start. Here, you see a nice lifting in a position ready to cut, so immediately we can continue with the intended cut. And once we've cleared this part, we can crawl under, cut open the remaining uh, squamous mucosa, and cut towards the distal line. Here you can already see that. You can see the markers, so we have a good control of what we're doing. We don't have to be afraid that we're cutting into the lesion. And slowly, stepwise, lifting and cutting, we're approaching the distal resection margin. And that's done now. We get rid of the rest of the submucosal tissue, and this part of the lesion is done. You notice some bleeding, which is a little bit more than usual, but nothing that we cannot handle. Most of the bleedings can be treated using the same hybrid knife. Always start with an injection uh, next to the vessel or behind the vessel, so you have your fluid cushion for safety. Uh, it is the same as injection therapy in ulcer bleeds, so you compress the vessel a little bit and then you can safely treat it. We continue cutting like this until the whole lesion is free. Okay. So we'll move to ESD in the stomach, which is a little bit different approach. The difficulty here is that the lesion is often difficult to delineate, 
So use your best endoscope, uh, use chroma endoscopy uh, if necessary, and place clear markers around the lesion. You will face yourself often in a difficult position. You'll make paradoxic movements, sometimes you even have to retroflex, and during the procedure, because of the amount of air insufflated, sometimes positions can really change. Remember that if you're really facing, you're finding yourself in a different situation than where you started, make sure you get rid of most of the air before you continue. When you go to the body of the stomach, you'll find lots of submucosal vessels, a lot more than you'll find in the antrum, so you'll treat a lot of bleedings there. Here you see an example of a lesion. There are clear markings around it, so I cannot be mistaken. These should be two to five millimeters around the lesion and close to each other. How close? You should be able to see from the first marker to the next, so you can plan your circumferential resection. If you cannot see the next one, you have no way of knowing where to go. So I'll show you in this example. We'll do this, uh, part of the circumferential incision here, and at all times you can see two markers. Here, every time we start with the submucosal injection, and we, when we see it inject, we start cutting. Cut for a few millimeters, then again inject, as you can see here, and you continue cutting. You can already see two markers, so we know exactly where to go. No need to pull out the knife, this saves a lot of time and makes it really safe. Go around the markers, another lift, and half of the circumference is already cut here. Look how fast that went. Submucosal dissection is exactly the same. Here next to a vessel, inject, see what happens. You don't need to exchange and you can immediately start your submucosal dissection. We have a good view of the muscle layer, so we should be able not to cut it. Again, every cut starts with an injection, slowly lift this vessel and then treat it using the Herbie hybrid knife. Just like that. We'll move to ESD in the colon. The difficulty in the colon is that it, the wall is very thin, especially on the right side of the colon. Often there is poor scope control, uh, especially also in the right colon, because of the length of the endoscope and patient breathing, lowering the diaphragm and making scope control very poor. And then there is the poor lifting of the submucosal layer. So for this reason, we choose this stepwise circumferential incision. I will only open from the anal side, approaching the lesion in a frontal view. We don't need markers because we clearly distinguish the lesion from normal mucosa. And here you can see that we're making this partially circumferential incision. We'll move to the submucosal dissection. Again, stepwise lifting. We appreciate the muscle layer and we start cutting very slowly and take out all these separate fibers. Again, inject and cut in the predecided direction without having to exchange the instrument. Injection for safety and continue to cut. And when you've done the submucosal dissection up to the level of the circumferential ex uh, incision, you can extend the circumferential incision from both sides until you've really reached the back side of the lesion. Then cut the remainder of the mucosa and the lesion is completely resected. Here again, beautifully demonstrated, submucosal lift followed by the dissection in the predecided direction. Just 
just a little bit more cuts and we have really reached the backside of this lesion already. Once you've developed this flap, it's easier to crawl under with a cap, like in this situation. Start with a little lift and then take out these fibers. Notice here that at all times we're close to the muscle layer. We're able to see it, so we won't have to cut it. Every cut starts with an injection and then we slowly take out these fibers, working in a frontal plane moving from left to right and right to left. Don't develop one side of the lesion more than the other side because it will be pulled down and you have a harder time uh, doing a submucosal dissection in that area. Finishing is difficult. By the time you are almost finished, you have a poor control of the lesion. It will be floppy and moving everywhere. So make use of gravity, use your cap, but don't push too hard. and go slowly in this step. Once you're done, have a look at the resection site first. The lesion will be there and you can retrieve it later, but first look for any signs of trouble. Whenever you have a bleeding or perforation, you would like to know it now and not pull out the lesion and come back later to see that there is actually quite some damage. So, in conclusion, I think ESD is a challenging procedure and it comes with a high complication rate. The Erby uh, provides you with three different hybrid knives for any situation where you can use submucosal lifting at your, disposable at, uh, at your disposal at any time. And this provides you with a lot of safety and a lot of speed. Thank you very much.